Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to review several new cosmetics that's newly released for summer 2023. And these products will cover the new foundation from Dior and the limited edition of eyeshadow and the blush released from Zuku. And also I'm going to cover a rare brand from Japan, which is called Addition. And that will be the highlighter blush of the purple shade. So let's jump right in. So these are the beauties for me to review today. And I'm going to try on these products on my hand and arm before the application on my face. And I will review the Dior foundation first before I go to the eyeshadow and the blush. So first thing first, let's review this uh, Dior new foundation together. So I find this foundation to be the most misleading foundation up to date. The packaging says forever skin glow and it's a 24 hour wear radiant foundation. But after I use it many times, I found this name to not to be accurately capturing what's in there. So this foundation is supposed to provide a dewy and glowy effect, but instead it's just uh, so dry and uh, it's almost like the matte effect of the foundation comparable to those uh, type of uh, mineral liquid foundation like this one, Bare Pro from the uh, Bare Minimals. So this is just a very surprising and misleading and I'll show you why. So initially when I decided to purchase this uh, liquid foundation is mainly because firstly, I like all of the Dior cosmetic and beauty products. And secondly, I saw this one was uh, awarded as the uh, most popular liquid foundation by the um, Cosme Beauty Award. So I decided that this one must be a good one, especially for the summer wear, because I always like the dewy and glowy liquid foundation in the summer times, because that can add to the natural illuminate to my skin. But to my surprise, when I first use it, it's like sucking up all my moisture level or layer from my face. I was like, after one hour, I feel like my skin is very dry. And after two hours of wearing this liquid foundation, I feel like my skin is in a very intolerable condition. I feel like it's so dry that almost, uh, you, you know, I can literally see the fallout or the cakiness of this, uh, um, you know, on the lines and uh, um, and wrinkles, like fine wrinkles on my face. And that was like totally unacceptable. And it's not a cheap foundation. It's from the Dior, like the first line of the uh, beauty brand. And it's just, uh, I guess it's just uh, totally not reflecting its name here. It says 24 hour wear. But then for my case, it's like two hour of wear is more than tolerable. So it's just a totally disappointing to me. And then I decided to give it another shot and I tried to prime my skin by putting on more of the moisturizers followed by the um, moisturizing primer. But then after I put on this liquid foundation, it's the same thing. I have two hours, it's just so dry that I can't just wait to, well, removes makeup okay this it's that bad and then um the last thing i want to do before i decided to toss this foundation is to try out um, adding some of this haba oil into the liquid foundation and i'll show you the difference here now i'm trying to do a demonstration to compare the bare pro foundation to our dior foundation on my arm also, I'm trying to include another comparison, including this uh, Haba squealing oil into the Dior foundation so that you can visualize the difference. Okay, let's begin. So the first panel from the Bare Mineral Liquid Foundation. And now on the middle panel is our new guy, Dior Skin Glow. So you can see that the in, in terms of the liquidity and the ability to spread out, this um, bare mineral foundation has even a 
better mobility and fluidity than that from the Dior Liquid Foundation. So both formula has a medium to high coverage. As you can see, it already covered my original skin color, freckles and dark spots. And within 10 seconds of application onto my skin, both formulas are already settled and dry out. You like the paint on the wall, it dry out very fast. Okay. Now, now let's use uh, these uh, two droplets of the Haba Oil to manually create that radiant glow. Make sure that the oil and the foundation is fully mixed up. We create this individualized foundation just for myself. And now you can see the foundation can spread out to even more skin area. But it's kind of like a diluted version compared to the original one in the middle panel. So with the help of the pure oil, it can add to the glow of the foundation and also to make sure that your skin feels more comfortable. Since the squealing oil can formulate a protective layer onto your face. Compared to the original Dior foundation, I like the last panel with Hapa oil much, much better. Not only it adds to the natural radiance to my skin, also it kind of makes the foundation sit on my skin more nicely and comfortably. The difference between the mid panel, which is the original Dior foundation, and the right panel is just so obvious, right? The middle panel is dry and mattified with the right panel dewy and glowy. I can live with the right foundation for at least 8 hours of the daily wear. And I tried to find out the reason why it's suckling all the moisture layer. So from the ingredient list, I see that both water and alcohol takes uh, the higher percentage of the formula. Also, I see my old friend titanium dioxide, which is contributing to the uh, sunscreen SPF 20, which is a good ingredient, but uh, that ingredient is mineral based. So it's also uh, contributing to that the moisture sucking kind of effect. Um, and for this formula, it's not the, um, it's supposedly a good one because it has all those uh, skin emollient ingredients in it. And the formula smells like the floral scent since it has the iris and the um, hibiscus uh, flower extract. So it has that um, good smell. So to summarize this foundation, I would say it's only applicable or suitable for the super oily skin. And uh, if you have the same skin type as me, like the complexion or is even a little bit dry, I would not recommend this uh, foundation. If you, you purchase it already and you don't want to waste it, I would suggest you, you utilize this foundation together with some um, uh, pure oil or other type of oil based serum. Okay. If you haven't purchased it already, hopefully my video will help you make the decision not to go there because just don't take the name for granted and think this foundation is going to provide the long wear of the dewy and glowy effect because it is simply not. Okay. Now let's move on to the next beauty. And this eyeshadow palette is from the Suku Summer Release of 2023 and it's also a limited edition under the shade 126. 
Typically, the Suku eyeshadow palettes are in the black cases. So as you can see here, this summer release really stands out as one of a kind. It's rare and pretty. The color story is about the purple. All four shades are creamy and easy to apply. The top left is the very fine glitter powders with the pink and the purple shine. The top right is matte in texture and the dusted purple in color. Now the bottom left is the highlight of this whole palette and it's metallic in texture with the purple and dichrome shine of blue. And lastly, the dry rose shade in the bottom right in the satin texture and could be used as an eyeliner too. And my personal opinion is that most people like the bottom left color, which is the reason that a lot of people purchase this palette at the first place. This shade is very rare and pretty. I would say besides this bottom left, other three shades could be easily find substitute in other palettes. And speaking of the purple eyeshadow palette with similar color story, the closest one would be the Pretty Baby from Tom Ford eyeshadow palette. And this Pretty Baby palette, the purple shade would be deeper than that of the Suku one. The bottom shade of the Pretty Baby is also a dichrome eyeshadow with red and purple shine. So to differentiate these two palettes, I would say the Tom Ford Pretty Baby is more suitable for the fall and the winter wear because of the eyeshadow color here is darker and bolder, whereas the Suku 126 is more suitable for the spring and summer. And you can see here under the sunlight, the color tone and the shine is slightly different from the indoor light. Now I'm going to switch gear and cover the Suku Summer Limited Edition Blush 141 and the highlighter brush from Addition which is with the shade 5N Aurora Veil. In my opinion, both Suku and Addition palettes are worth buying because of the special shades. You see here, the Suku palette is more like a marble mixture of three different shades. The white highlighter, the pink, shimmery, and the red shade. And here is the swatches from both Suku and Addition. From the left the Suku palette, you can see the white, pink, and the red strips. So when you dip your brush into the palette, depending on the proportion of the powder coming from white, pink, or the red strips, it could create a gradient blush look or the different blush ranging from the translucent all the way to the lantern red. The right band on my arm is coming from the Addition Swatch and it's a pretty and rare purple blush highlighter. I'm always a big fan of the purple blush and highlighter. Earlier this year, Suku released a limited edition of the blush which is called the Pearl Lilac, the limited edition 105 and it's highly sought after but out of stock everywhere. So this Addition blush would be a good substitute. If you miss that the Suku Limited Edition 105, this edition highlighter would be your second chance. There are the swatches under the sunlight for the blush and the highlighter. And you can see under the sunlight, those uh, glimmer or the shimmer will look more obvious. So now I'm going to ap apply this uh, uh, color story on my eyes. Because the Suku eyeshadow uh, palette uh, includes two of the built-in brushes already and these two are very soft and uh, useful so usually I will just go ahead and use the travel size brush to apply the eyeshadow. So first I'm going to dip into this dusted purple for my upper eyelid and crease. Then I'm going to dip into this brownish purple color for the last third of my upper eyelid and also to use as eyeliner color as well. Same thing for my left eye. Go to deepen the color and create the gradient look towards the last third of my upper eyelid. And I'm going to use the same eyeliner shade to work towards my lower lash line. Now 
Now that I complete the eyeliner shade, I'm going to utilize the uh, yellow tone or the champagne highlighter for my inner part of my eyes. Now the purple dichrome for the middle of my upper eyelid to create the halo eye and gradient look. Now the eye look under the sunshine. It's clearly creating a cool tone eye look. Now I'm ready to use this Suku Pure Color Blush on my cheeks. And again, I'm gonna utilize the travel size brush that's coming with this palette. Lastly, I'm gonna try on this Addition Brush Highlighter. So sometimes I do realize, you know, the color shade looks somewhat different uh, under the camera shooting and uh, um, Especially for this type of uh, purple-ish glitters, it's very subtle and not very intense So it's uh, less visible under the camera shooting So what I'm gonna do is to take a picture to zoom in that uh, um, purple-ish highlighter So let's see Hope this zoom in version helped to visualize the purple blush highlighter here so as I point out, it's almost iridescent uh, lying on the top of my cheekbone. Both Suku blush and the addition purple blush highlighter is in the cool tone. So it's suitable for the summer wear to create a cooler vibe. But because of these two palettes is so lightweighted and subtle in color, I would say it actually works for all skin color and the complexion. If you liked this video and find it useful, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.